Thank you so much for joining us. We know this word will significantly impact your life, so let's tune in. Today we're going to talk about growing through fasting. And I said, so why are we talking about growing? Because this year, God has declared it a year of growth. And that means that you should expect to grow this year. And what, the, what does the word growing mean? Just, I'm just going to go through the definition. It's the act or process of developing. Some will say developing. We are growing when we're going through a process and we're taking action that lead to growth. It's a process. You just don't grow overnight. It's a process. It also means, growing means increasing, advancing, expanding, improving, succeeding, maturing, and multiplying. All these words are real positive. Every single one of us want to advance this year. Every single one of us want to get to a place that we're increasing in certain areas of our lives. And we want to develop and we're willing to go through a process to get there. So fasting will help us grow. Say it with me. Fasting will help us grow. And today we're going to look at a scripture and it's found in, in Matthew chapter 4. So I'm going to give you time to find that scripture. But before I do, I want to give you two parts of fasting. Two parts. One is abstaining from food. That's, that's the first part. And, and that means we're fasting when we're saying no to food. And so fasting is a time of abstaining from food or some kind of food or drink for a spiritual purpose. Now, we talked about last, um, last Sunday about different types of fast. There's a complete fast. That means that you could do a day or two, which are, which, which, and just like Jesus did, no food or water for two days. Very difficult to do. I, don't, I do not recommend to do it for four days because they said if you do it for four days, you could die. And we don't want you dying. And the other part of fasting is, someone say praying. Praying. So, so praying. So pray, someone say pray and fast. See, praying without, I mean, fasting without praying is just, just a diet. You're just going to lose some weight. But we're not here to just fast. We're here to communicate with God. So there's different types of fast. One is a complete fast. Second is a Daniel fast. A Daniel fast would be something where you just eat this way. You eat vegetables and nuts and water and juices and that kind of fast. Or you could do a liquid fast. A liquid fast is that you're saying all for maybe for a week or it might be for the 30, for the 21 days, I'm just going to drink broth and juices. I'm not going to eat any, any, any food at all. Or you could do a partial fast, which most, most of us do. And that means you could fast until like 6 o'clock in the afternoon, something like that, and then eat a light meal after that. Or you can mix it with a Daniel fast. But every one of those are fast. And what you're doing is saying, God, I'm fasting because I want to communicate with you. So prayer is communicating with God. So I'm denying myself, and I want to start getting focused on communicating with you. You're one word away from your whole life turning around. Just one idea that God can give you can give you a financial breakthrough, can fix a problem, can actually give you some wisdom beyond your years. Just one word from God can encourage you, help you overcome depression, overcome a tough situation you're in. Just one word of God can create, come on, I want you to get this. One word, when God says, let, let there be light, there was light. One word can turn your darkness into day. One word can set you free. One word can heal you. One word can solve a major problem. One word can get you into a breakthrough just one word. And what God is saying, I want to speak to you, and this is what we're saying for 21 days. God, speak. So now, we're going to be talking about areas we can grow in while we're fasting, and we're going to get this from Matthew chapter 4. Now, what we're going to do is see Jesus, he's fasting, and he's fasting for an extended period of time. He's fasting for 40 days, and it says 40 days nights. And the reason, I was wondering, God, why would you put 40 days and 40 nights? Because he just didn't fast until 6 o'clock. He fasted all night too, 40 days and 40 nights. He said, well, what kind of fast did he do? Did he do a liquid fast? Did he do a Daniel fast? Did he do a partial fast? No, Jesus did a complete fast. Now, that's a miracle. A complete fast. This is what we're saying. He didn't eat or drink for 40 days and nights. So let's look at this story. He starts off this fast at the beginning 
of his ministry. We're doing a fast at the beginning of our year. He's doing it at the beginning. He's getting empowered. You know what we're doing at the beginning of the year? We're fasting, and this is so cool. We're overcoming things that maybe would have overcame us in two months from now, three months from now, four months from now. This is what we're saying. If we're going to be in a spiritual fight anyways, why don't we just fight now? And we're saying, devil, if you have a plan to come against me, let's go ahead. I'll call you out right now, and let's fight at the beginning of the year, and let's, let's get you underneath my feet. I want to walk in a year of victory. No surprise attacks. As a matter of fact, there is a surprise attack. I'm going to fast for 21 days, and I'm calling you out. Well, that's basically what happened here in Matthew chapter 4. Look at this. Then Jesus, then Jesus was led was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very, very hungry. So what areas are we going to grow and fast in? The first area we're going to grow and fast in is we're going to grow in being led by the Spirit of God. Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. Now that word led is a very interesting word. This is what it means. It means to lead up or bring into a higher place. Say it with me. To lead up or bring into a higher place. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will always lead us to a higher place. We want to, every single one of us, be led by the presence and the Spirit of God because if we're led by the presence of God, He will always lead us to a higher place. The Holy Spirit never leads you to a lower place. He leads you to a higher place. And if that's the case, that He leads us to a higher place, shouldn't we seek to let the Holy Spirit lead every part of of our lives. Every part of your life that's being led by the Spirit of God will go to a higher place. Every area that's being led by the Spirit of God, you will experience success. You will experience production. You will experience prosperity. You will experience victory. If we're led by the presence or the Holy Spirit of God. So he's being led by the Spirit of God. Where is he being led to? Well, we're going to look at that in just a second. But Galatians 5.25 says this, Since we're living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So should we let the Holy Spirit lead us in, in our marriages, in our choices, in our business transactions. And he said, let me lead you while you're raising your kids. Let me lead you in every part of your life. And I promise you this, if you let the Holy Spirit lead you in every part of your life, this is what's going to happen. You'll have success in every part of your life. So our sinful, now the Holy Spirit always leads us. He leads us to a higher place. Our sinful nature will always lead us to a lower place. So fasting will take us to a higher place. If we're led by our sinful nature or our desires, it will lead us to a what? Some will say lower place. The devil never tempts you trying to take you higher, even though he tells you he's getting you high. He's not getting you high. He's getting you low. That's why after every high, there's a low. When the devil promises you a high, it's temporary to take you lower than you ever were. Don't fall for the temptation. It's just advertisement to take you and degrade your life, degrade your character, degrade your thinking, degrade your emotions. The devil's in the business of degrading, not promoting. So don't fall for the advertisement. It's not true. Temporary pleasure for long-term demotion. Wow, look at that. So our sinful nature 
doesn't help us. It doesn't take us to a higher place. It takes us to a lower place. Look at this in Romans 8, 13. If you use your lives to do what your sinful selves want, you will die spiritually. If I, this is what I say, if I do what my sinful nature wants, I, it's not leading me to a great life. It's leading me to what? Death. It's leading me to, to failure. It's leading me to frustration. It leads to death. You will spiritually die, die spiritually. But if you use the Spirit's help to stop doing the wrong things you do with your body, you will have a true life. It's very, this is interesting. It says this, that the Holy Spirit, if you use the Holy Spirit this way, to help you stop doing the wrong things that you're doing with your body, it will lead to true life. This scripture is saying that if we're struggling with an addiction or a bad habit in our body, the Holy Spirit will help us stop doing it. There's good news in here. The cycle of wrong can be broken through the power of the Holy Spirit. And fasting gets us in that place where we're saying, I no longer want to use my body. When we're using our body to do wrong things, we are our worst enemy. It's not even the devil in this scripture. It's our body in this scripture doing wrong things. Let's ask ourselves, what wrong things have you been doing with your body? Because it's impossible to be a sinner without getting your body involved. Your body is the one speaking to you. Come on, feed me pleasure. Come on. Right? Your body gets involved. But there's a problem. If you're getting your body involved in sinful acts, self-destructive acts, things that you know are wrong, understand this. The end result will be death. Me and Lisa made a decision when, before, when we got married, before we got married. And um, my body, my body, did not, my body wanted to do bad things before we got married. My body. I'm here saying that. Go ahead, break it down. So when I, when I was kissing Lisa, I wasn't thinking about heaven. My body was speaking. <laughs> Don't act like you're different. I'm just talking about my situation. But you're the same boat, so. <laughs> my body, right? My body was speaking. And, and I remember th there's a lot of confusion because when your body starts speaking, you start tricking yourself. And then before you know it, you start talking to other people that are using their body to sin. And then I start asking, what do you think? And they say, well, you know, um, this is, this is, I even talk to pastors and tell me crazy stuff like this. I say, you know, as long as you don't go all the way, you're okay. <laughs> you know what that means? You're giving, he, he was giving me permission from my body to do as much as I can without just going all the way. I found out that didn't work. I remember saying that didn't work. Lisa's sitting all there all serious. I said, it happened to us, honey. <laughs> I didn't have no good advice. My body wanted to do wrong, and I was like going along with it. Until one day the Holy Spirit says, that her body doesn't belong to you. I go, who does it belong to? He goes, it belongs to me. She's not your wife. She's my daughter. You can't feel up on her. Now we're talking about your body. <laughs> so I told Lisa because either, either, this is, I want you to get this, either I was going to lead to death or an amazing life. 
And be careful that you're not selling out your future to please your temporary pleasure in your body. And what we're saying here in 2020, at the beginning of the year, that my body will not lead my life to death this year. My body will show up. I'll tell my body what to do all year long. Body, show up to church. Body, lift your hands and praise. Body, dance for Jesus. Body, live a holy life. Body, come on, body, show up to discipleship. Body, read the Bible. Body. So what we did was, I told Lisa, this making out stuff ain't working as a Christian. So I go, this is what we're going to do. We're going to tell our bodies, no, 100% no. And I made a deal with her, Lisa, we're going to be married in the future. But right now, we're just going to worship God, praise God, and give our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. That's what we're going to do. It's a reasonable act of worship. And I told her, honey, I'm not going to kiss you again until we get married. The most we're going to do is hold hands. But even that gets me excited. <laughs> no more hugging straight on like this. I hug you like a sister. <laughs> Except, but how, how did that go? You know how it went? God gave me the power to say no to my body. God gave me the power. The Holy Spirit gave me the power. Come on. He gave me the power to, to stop doing wrong things with my body. And when he gave me that power, we just started filling all that time that we're making out. We just started doing ministry. We started going to convalescent homes. But I want you to understand this. Because we were willing to stop doing wrong things with our body, it was going to lead to a true life, a true marriage, a true ministry. If, if, I want you to get this, if I did not, if we did not make the choice to stop doing wrong with our body, I want you to get this, if you don't stop doing wrong with your body this year, I don't care what goals you set, how much inspiration you have, how much motivation you have, how many goals that you set, how much vision you have, it's going to lead to guaranteed death. See, if you really love her and you really love him, love God more than you love each other so you could lay a foundation to have an amazing life. See, we want to get to true life, but we don't want to follow the steps to get there. And that's why you see all these movie stars. Like, we don't look at movie stars like, you know what, I just want to have a, ma a marriage just like Brad Pitt, just like Brad just love to have a marriage just like you don't think that way and and you might want to have Brad Pitt but you don't have a <laughs> your body that's your body i'm talking about your body there it goes again but you might think oh yeah if i was just married to her man one of those kardashians woo! that would be awesome but the truth is if you use your body to do what's wrong, you could get married, but you have no future. This is the problem. Your foundation is rotten. And the scripture says the Holy Spirit will give us the power. And this is what fasting is all about. The Holy Spirit giving us the power to say no to our body and say no to sin and say no to the addiction and say no to the weed and say no to the alcohol and say no to the anger and say no to the porn and say no to those things that will destroy our lives. Are you still with me? So now we say no. I, Year, a year and a half later, we get married. You know what's so great about that? We're expecting a great life. Look what the scripture says. Look what the scripture says. It says uh, let's read it again. It says, if you use your lives. I saw a little ghetto right there. If you use your lives. <laughs> I feel like a, uh, To do what your sinful selves want. I want you to think is. Using your life to, you're using your life to do what your sinful nature wants. Just think about that. Your, your whole life is being used to fulfill lustful pleasures. 
Where is that going to take you? I, I met up with a young man that was that, uh, on the streets the other day. And, and I talked to him. And he's using his life right now to do with his sinful self wants. So I asked him, can I help you with anything? He goes, yeah, you can help me. Give me 500 bucks so I can buy some methamphetamines. And he knows I'm a pastor. I go, you're dumb. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I offered him something better. I offered him hope off the streets. I offered him, you could go in our men's home and transform your life. We love you. We're here for you. We're not going to help you continue destroying your life, but we'll help you rebuild your life, get set free. And you know what he told me? This is what he told me. It's not a good answer. He told me, not right now. The reason he's, not, he's saying not right now, there's a reason. He's right now using his life to do what his sinful self wants. Every week I see this young man, he's deteriorated. I knew him before he was on the streets. His mind was clear. He was on his way to become a minister. He was a young man that even, he was reading a book and gave me a book that's amazing. And he was saying, I just read this book. But somehow there was a shift that happened. Where there was a temptation that came to please his body. And he took it. And when he took it, it took over. And now... He wasn't homeless. Now he's homeless on the streets. He doesn't take a shower. He's lost his mind. He's talking to himself. A few months ago, he was a sound-minded young man. What happened? He began to use, use his body to do what his sinful self wants. And this is what happened. You will die spiritually. Emotionally, relationally. I don't want anyone to be deceived in this house. I don't want you one of those pastors that tickle your ears and doesn't help you really, come on, really prosper as a man and woman of God. There's a way to do this. Even athletes know this. If I cannot discipline my body, I can never win the prize. See, not everyone can be a champion because it takes a lot of discipline to tell this body what to do. You got to eat the right foods. You got to exercise. You got to take your body to the threshold of great pain to succeed and grow. This year, we're just choosing to do that early in the year. My body, I'll take it to its limits of not eating anything so I can begin to say, God, take over my body, my mind, everything that I have because I don't want to die. I want to live a true life. Does anybody want a true life? Look at it says. Let's finish that verse. It says, but, but. Someone say, but. But. Stop saying but. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you use the Spirit's help, if it's a, what he's saying is there's an option. Say it with me. There's an option. We can use the Spirit's help. The addiction is not bigger than the Spirit's help. The bad habit is not bigger than the Spirit's help. The, I want you to guess, the nicotine is not bigger than the Spirit's help. The alcoholic, the alcohol is not bigger than the Spirit's help. The addiction to the porn and sex is not bigger than the Spirit's Help. What God is saying, I want you guys, homosexuality is not bigger than the Spirit's help. Whatever you use in your body to do that's wrong, I have good news for you. Today, you can ask God for the Spirit's help, and He can help you overcome and give us new desires. Help. Help for what? To stop doing. We, sometimes we need some help to just stop doing the wrong things so we can start doing the right things. Use the Spirit's help to stop doing the wrong things you do with your what? 
body. And then he says, you will have true life. There's two words here. One is die, and two ends. One is die. If I do what my, if I, if I live to do what my sinful nature wants to do, it will lead to death. If I, if I overcome through the power of the Holy Spirit and I start doing things that God wants me to do, I'll experience, someone say, true life. True life. Now, death, this is where word die means. You will die means it's, it's like a tree that dries up. That means you're going to begin to dry up. It describes seed, which is not, which, which rots when planted. That means all your endeavors, you're going you're gonna to do it and they're going to rot. And you're going to see someone else that's doing it and they're succeeding. You say, how come they're succeeding and I'm not? This is what happens. I want you to get this. When we're using our body, I want you to get this. When we're using our body to do sinful things, it affects everything you touch. Your seed no longer has power to produce. Seed represents your kids too. It represents your efforts. So when you think, oh man, I'm just right now doing some sexual healing. That's what I'm doing right now. You say, some of you guys don't know what that is. It's an old song, oldie. I'm not going to sing it for you because it's nasty. Some of you guys are singing it right now. Uh, <laughs> Todd right there. <laughs> Todd's funny. He goes, I'm legal now. I, yeah, I, yes. And I want you to get this. While you're doing that, this is what's happening. Everything that you're touching is beginning to rot away. Your integrity your character, your, I want you to get your wisdom, your family, your marriage, ideas. Everything starts rotting. I mean, you start, even when you're working hard, it don't work. So I'm working hard, and it still doesn't work. Because the seed, when you plant it, rots. And why did it rot? Not because there was a problem with the seed. There was a problem with the person that touched it. Crazy. And why is this important for you to know? Because while when the pleasure comes to use your body to do something that you know you shouldn't, understand you are negotiating with the devil. Nothing good is going to come out of it than a temporary high or a temporary pleasure. In the long run, you trade it in your favor for a curse. Sin still curses humanity. Sin still causes corruption. This is not a popular message nowadays, but it's the truth. It's the scripture right here. How many know I love you guys? Because I love you, I got to share that part too. Come on, I want you to live a real strong spiritual life. That 2020 is a year of growth. Get your body in check. When your body's in check and you're using your body, I want you to get this, to do what is right and stop doing what is wrong, it will lead to true life. Not death, not rotten. Death, let's go that. Death also means misery now and for eternity in hell. The more, I want you to, the more we use our body to sin, this is what happens. The more miserable you become. Come on, do you guys remember when you were like using your body to sin a lot? You were happy for a minute, but you became very miserable at night. Put your head in that pillow, you can't sleep. Depression. Sometimes you're hearing voices. Deep-seated guilt and condemnation. 
was sitting in there. That's what drove you to your knees to worship, to get set free from that spirit of darkness that was on you. You find your life that was, it was getting out of control. Your budgets were getting out of control. Your thinking was getting out of control. Your relationships were getting out of control. And then you find yourself going deeper into a sin than you ever thought you would go. Your, your, the quality of people you started hanging around with changed. You find yourself in conversations that you had no business being in. You started thinking thoughts like, like ooh, why am I even thinking this? Something began to take over. The depression started kicking in. The fear started kicking in. The anger was out of control. Insecurity. Abuse. Because it's getting worse now. The relationships are no longer healthy. The pain is severe. All because of decisions of using our body. And the devil says, you know what you need? You need to use your body right now to do something wrong so you can get some relief. And every time we do it, the vice grips get strong, tighter on us. But I got good news for everyone here. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on. We can be free. What does true life mean? The blessed life. The enjoyable life. This is good. You know what's so crazy? The devil tempts us to use our body to do what's wrong to give us joy. And it does give us a little joy for a moment. But and then it leads to a downer. No one at the end of getting drunk all night, throwing at the, and then in the morning you're throwing up in the toilet. Says, oh, I love this. This is the best part. Oh, I love it. <laughs> or wake up with a black eye and you don't even know who hit you. Or wake up in a jail cell. ¿Qué pasó? Right? Or wake up with a stranger in your bed you don't even know their name. Who are you, by the way? <laughs> Right? In the club, she looked really pretty. In the morning, oh, Lord, what did I do here? <laughs> Hope we're not going to produce no babies with this one here. I know, that's slow blow. I, I, I'm crazy. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking out loud. I'm fasting. I'm not thinking right right now. I'm trying to get my thoughts all in order right now. <laughs> But isn't that crazy? Because that's what sin leads to. It leads to embarrassment. It leads to shame. It leads to wrong decisions. You can't even drive a car under the influence, and you're trying to run a life under the influence. And God is saying, get under the influence of my spirit so you can start going places. I got a plan for you to start living a life full of joy. Now, I want you to get this. I'm not faking I'm happy. I'm happy. I am. Because if I follow the Spirit's lead, He always leads me up. He leads me higher and higher and higher. I am better off today than I was last year. Come on, I want you to understand. I am growing. I am happier. I am more free. I'm enjoying life. And I'm not, and this is what I don't want to do. I don't want to let the devil rip me off this year. I don't want him to put me on the wrong track. And Jesus started his ministry denying the number one enemy. It wasn't the devil. It was his, come on, I want you to get this. It's the flesh. Hungers. Hunger for the wrong stuff. True life. Blessed life. Enjoyable life. Someone say enjoyable life. Christians, you should be happy. And if you're not real, 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 real happy, maybe you're using your body the wrong way. Maybe that one night stand stole all your joy and your peace and your worship. Because the devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And how does he rip us off? He rips us off when he has an opportunity. The Bible says the devil's seeking whom he may devour. What that means is he can't devour just anybody, but there's certain people he has rights to. I'm looking. 
Whether you're a Christian or not, he could rip you off. So next time your boyfriend says, come on, baby, you know I love you. Come on. You got to tell him, look, you're the devil. No, just kidding. <laughs> Get behind me, Satan. I've been to church. Hallelujah, God. No. I guarantee you, start running. Oh, my gosh, you're crazy. She's a fanatic. <laughs> What that preacher be teaching? That's a cult over there. I don't know what's going on. You just got to tell them, look, I can't afford, I can't afford to use my body for the wrong thing because if I use my body for the wrong thing, I've learned it's going to lead to death. It's going to lead to, it's going to lead to lack of production. It's going to lead to misery now. And if I don't watch it forever. Because you got to get this. Jesus did not just die to save your soul. He died to save you completely. Your mind, your soul, and your body. He paid the price. As a matter of fact, when you're a Christian, your body don't even belong to you. When you, were, I want you, when you weren't a Christian, your body belonged. It didn't even belong to you either. It belonged to the devil. You were his slave. And he will tell you what to do with your body. You know, tonight what we're going to do is go drive by. Okay, let's go. This weekend, man, we're going to get faded. Oh, where? <laughs> this weekend is going to be awesome. We're, we're going to go to Las Vegas. And what you do in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. That scripture is awesome. <laughs> Out of the satanic Bible. Come on, you know you, we all know how we talked, how we talked. We were listening to some crazy voices. But Jesus did not save you so you could continue following that voice that was leading you to death. And because that voice led you to death, there was a day you came into the house of God and you were saying, I am done with the slavery. I want a new life. I want to start living a real life because this drug life ain't alive. Come on. This hustler life ain't alive. This playboy life ain't alive. God, I want a new life. We just barely started touching the scripture here. <laughs> but it takes faith to live by the Spirit. Someone say it takes faith to live by the Spirit. And I, I'm going to end it with this last point. It takes faith to live by the Spirit because the Spirit doesn't always lead you where you want to go. <laughs> it leads you where you need to go. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, led Jesus to a wilderness. He did not lead Jesus to Hawaii. He didn't lead him to Disneyland. He didn't lead him to hang out at the beach. He led him to a wilderness. To be tempted of the devil. We'll get into that next time. Because we're going to talk about this fasting stuff. Are you guys enjoying this fasting stuff? We just go, we, it's just going to give you a reason. Come on, we're going, to get this, we're going to get this body in check. And we're going to live a true life this year. Okay? But it will lead you to a wilderness. The thing about a wilderness that you must understand, it's a spiritual principle. You must understand this spirit principle. All growth and promotion comes through wilderness, a wilderness experience. The process to growth and success is always the same. Tests, pain, heartbreak, loss, trials, tribulations, and after the test comes the promotion. When the Holy Spirit was G leading Jesus into the wilderness, he was leading him through the same process every single one of us go through. There's no such thing as a promotion or going to another level without passing a test. Life is full of tests. But God doesn't lead you to be tested to fail. He always tests you to promote you. What is a wilderness? And we'll end it here. 
a place of uncertainty, desolate, solitary, uncultivated, used of persons who have been deserted by others, especially by friends and family. This is what the scripture says. I've seen this happen in my life. When I'm getting ready to get promoted to my highest levels in life, it seems like people leave, talk about you, break your heart. And you're like, oh my gosh, this looks like it's really bad. I feel uncertain right now. I'm not, I don't have a lot of confidence. I feel like I'm out of my comfort zone here. I feel like there's something out of sync in my life. And if you felt right now that there's something out of sync in your life and you feel uncertain and you feel your heart has broken, I have good news for you. God is ready to promote you and your best days are ahead of you. This wilderness, and I want you to get this, if God can get you through it, he can get you to it. Right now, some of you right now, God is saying this is just a transitional moment. This is not a time to give up. This is not a time to quit. This is not a time to commit suicide and begin to doubt. God is saying, I'm the one that started this work in your life. Allow me to lead you through it. And if you can let me lead you through your wilderness, I will get you to your blessing, to your breakthrough, to your victory. Get this. As you're fasting, you're allowing yourself to go through a wilderness experience. But after this, understand accelerated growth. There was something that happened and with Jesus spending 40 days fasting, that actually, I want you to get this, he did more in the 40 days of fasting than he could have did his whole life before the fast. That moment conquered the devil. And everything the devil was going to throw at him, Jesus conquered it. You know what we're going to do in this season? We're going to get our lives in order Submit it to God, and we're going to conquer but in the Spirit every single I'm a strategy of the enemy, and we're going to come out of this this year, come on, this fast with a victory, and then we're going into impartation 2020, and we're just going to worship God and thank God for all the victories. Let's give God just one more praise. He's a good God. Let's all stand up. If this message has been a blessing in your life and you would like to show support, please comment, like, share, and subscribe, or click the link below so that you can contribute to our ministry. Thank you and God bless.